So you think you can handle some Barograss in triple time? You got courage. <coughs> Welcome back to another video and this time it's going to be on basic Baroque style improv building blocks, leaks and patterns in triple time. If you're interested in Baroque improvisation, you probably already realized that although it's approachable for everybody, it takes practice to become awesome. And just like a martial arts fighter needs to train the individual moves and postures to become fluent, a Baroque style improviser has to internalize individual patterns and gestures, just like the ones I'm gonna show you. See you back in a few seconds. <laughs> Any of the upcoming examples shown in the video will be notated in 3-4, like the following one. This example could as well be notated like this, or like this, or even this. Visual decisions of notation depend on a lot of circumstantial factors and that's such a complex topic that I don't want to entangle myself in right now. So let's just go for the practical stuff. And I'm gonna begin with some cadences that I recommend to glue to your hands by transposing them into the common Baroque keys. Instead of declining a pattern through all keys, I usually say that at the beginning it's enough to take the keys of the two-part inventions, as this collection obviously tries to convey a certain normative concept of keys. So let's start with a simple cadence. And with a little more context and as cadential 6-4. And a cadence with 4-3 suspension. And it is of course possible to do double cadences in triple time. The same with sort of flipped upper voices. And the strongest of them all is the cadence with the hemiola, which I consider as a rather advanced device that I guess lesser experienced composers or improvisers wouldn't just come up with by themselves. Sounds like this. Why not showing a half cadence classic as well? That bass line is basically called the descending upper tetrachord and a typical baroque embellishment would be the 7-6 suspension on the descending 6th degree, which is a true cliché and I'm sure you've already heard this sound a hundred times. And now 7-6 in the middle voice. Sell meat like you, eh? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 you dare hit me, you old bat, you! I'll fix you! Why this focus on sequences at all? The simple answer is that sequences provide a convenient access into improvisation as those trigger the muscle memory, are relatively easy to transpose and teach you a lot on counterpoint and diminutions. In the following section I'm gonna focus on three related types of sequences. The classic circle of fifths, the three down to up and the tight bass. And for these ones I want to show some common triple time diminutions. And with this I mean individual embellishments of such a sequence like the one you can see here. And I'm gonna flip upper voices. In my opinion it is an absolute necessity to know about this voice flipping aspect, especially if you want to practice thoroughly, which means that you internalize both of these possible versions. And now to other circle of fifths examples that are as well equivalent, but in a different way.
So here is as well a certain combinatorial space in this pattern. As you can see that one's able to organize a single sequential module in two different ways. And let me address a certain detail in the second version I played. Always on the third module of the sequence, the whole thing is kinda becoming redundant. And in several Baroque compositions, one can recognize an inflection happening on that very situation. In this case, I'm going against the expected flow by breaking the pattern as I picked up the second element right away. Now on the standard 3 down 2 up, which is based on 6-5 chords. And this time I'm gonna start with the plain 3 voice scaffoldings. Now upper voices flip, so there is a 2-3 chain on top. This would be an established diminution type of this sequence. You can see the basic 7-6 chain on top, but the bass line is embellishing the scaffolding via a more horizontal line in which the original 3 down to up pattern is still embedded. And that's basically how diminution works. Let's listen. <laughs> You can as well apply diminutions to the upper voices. In this one I went for a mixture of both, as I embellished the top voice, but on the last quarter of each bar I put this little passing tone to overcome the third. So the overall rhythmic result will be an ongoing stream of eighth notes. I chose this example to highlight the chordal aspect, as in this one the diminutions are primarily drawn from arpeggios. When you analyze this example in terms of chords, you will recognize how the 3 down to up is actually a circle of fifths, although the outer voice motion is the primary contrapuntal aspect. <laughs> And as a little bonus example, let me throw this one in, as it is among my favorites, because it appears less frequent than the others. And if you have seen some of my other videos, you might know already that I have a soft spot for the ninth. <laughs> And maybe let's do this in a major key. This is a good beginner's lick because it's still pretty close to the simple three voice skeleton. And you can pretty much see how basic diminutions can be drawn from that by applying changing notes and passing tones. This example shows two voices in the upper system, but I tend to claim that it seems more convenient to put the 2-3 chain to the left hand, because this allows the right hand to provide a single melodic line, which makes a very comfortable setting to play. And another one. When you compare these two examples, you can see that there are basically two slightly different options, as you can go for either the simple 6th chord or as well the 6-5 chord. Another difference is related to the harmonic rhythm, because you can distribute those chords in two different ways, as you can see on the left. Actually, there is a third option when you stretch out the harmonic rhythm, in which each bar is given a single chord. And that's the final example for today.
As I announced already in the musical disclaimer, I dropped a big package with materials on my Patreon page that includes some more patterns than I've shown here and as well three instructive partimenti, especially on the sequences. In case you already subscribed, thanks for your generous support. See you next time. Cheers.